<laughs> yeah. yeah. All right, y'all. <laughs> We've already talked for about 20 minutes prior to this, but <laughs> lately, we've been, every podcast we do, we've been having like pre podcasts. Yeah. So, like, and know. Ethan, thank you for rolling because I'm sure you got some clips from that. Yeah. Um, but I'm super excited for this episode. I am your biggest fan cheerleader in the corner. Like, literally, when I saw you start working with Vinny at Self Made, yeah. I was like, dude, who is that? I, I just want to be by him. Like, I want, I, want, I want to go by him. Like, hey, like, his energy is so good. And you literally would walk in with the best energy even if Vinny was kicking your ass or you were not <laughs> happy with him you walked in and literally would make everybody smile like no matter the yes. day you had um so personally i just love seeing that cue and then seeing all the success you've had since we've initially like you know just met, met you yeah. at the facility so what year was that I want to 20, say 2019, 2019, 2019, 2019. Yeah. 2019. yeah, and oh, I yeah. feel like you were there when we had the windows like blacked out. Blacked oh, out. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, no, yeah. that's what I'm saying. When you guys were running ah. dirty. Yes. <laughs> no, he was. Allegedly. <laughs> Allegedly, when we were at church. Like, yes. <laughs> all the things. Hey, listen, we I got those fines cleared, so all this is allegedly. <laughs> we were not we're outside, operating just inside like a facility. Yes. <laughs> No, honestly, so when Jay told me that you were coming in, I'm super excited. I just want to hear more of your story because obviously we just see the highlight reel right now, what's on Instagram and all the Ellen show, um, you choreographing for NFL teams, and it's, it's just crazy, your Rams cheerleading career. So I want to just get to know, like, what was Baby Q about? Like, when did, when did everything start happening for you like you told us a little bit that you were an athlete prior to dancing so what was that transition like for you oh baby q was all over the place <laughs> like, that's your new baby, I'm now. baby, baby, baby q. Q. <laughs> i can't wait to have a little baby q. <laughs> Ten years, though. um no i feel like the coolest thing is that from what i remember i've always been the same person everybody i talk to who's like who's seen me grow up to like you've always been this energetic kind of an asshole like obnoxious like <laughs> but you've always been this so and then when i look for kids when i when i'm teaching i'm like you're like this now you're gonna be like that later and I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, oh, i don't like you now so i'm not gonna like you. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it goes both ways yeah. um, <laughs> But no, I mean, I've always been in the sports. My uh, mom's side of the family were big in baseball and bas uh, baseball and softball. My dad's side of the family were big on um, basketball, so I did both. Um, I loved baseball more; just wasn't as good at it. But I was always a seven, eight, nine guy, still on the team, still making the travel yeah. team. I was just, I wasn't, in, I wasn't one through four. Um, basketball was a different story; like I hated it, but I was just naturally good at it. Um, my dad coached at PHS and Blair forever. His brothers coached at uh blair and mirror and so a very passing and heavy family um so i did that forever and it wasn't until i would say in my sophomore year in high school uh i had a travel ball game my dad was like bro out and i was like i'm not going <laughs> oh, oh, uh oh um so yeah i quit <laughs> during the game and you guys can imagine that car ride during oh, the game during how far game. was that car ride like it was a tournament, and I wanted to say Barstow. Oh, oh so. Barstow to Pasadena. Barstow to Rancho. Barst uh, it was Barstow to Rancho at the same okay. time, but it was so. But still, just dealing with that. But what uh, triggered um, you to to quit in that mid game? Yeah, I had started watching. You know, I've always been a fan of the arts. Like I did mm -hmm. this thing called show choir in eighth grade, which is like singing and dancing. dancing but it was yeah. more like more mm -hmm. singing and like step yep. clapping. Um, but it wasn't until I saw, I think season four of So You Think You Dance, and it was Twitch, and it was Will. Um, yeah. And it was two guys, two black dudes, look just like me, doing two completely different styles. One was a crumper and a hip hopper, and one yep. was like technically trained. Um, and I was like, I want to do that, and I can do that. Mm. I can't do it now, but I, I will. Yeah. Um, and literally, it was that moment where I was like, I'm done. Like I like, thank you for the sports, I appreciate it. But now I'm about to about to dance, Mid and so I quit. Then that, that was on a Sunday. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> I was, uh, and all my friends in high school are all they all competed with the studio down the street. Um, so I was like, I want to kind of take class. So I started taking class. I was the worst one in class for a year, but that kind of motivated me to never be that worst one in the class later. You know? Right. Yeah. But so, so what was your parents' reaction? So yeah, you, I was like, how are you, you told your dad and then go, and then go into dance? Because yeah. someone had to pay. I had to wash <laughs> windows and wash the studio because they were not paying for it. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So obviously parents didn't like that because it's so unconventional. You of know course. what I mean? And this isn't the route they saw for their son. Mm -hmm. um, but I've also been, I'm, I'm just stubborn and I always just do what I want. And you're going to appreciate it later. Right. Uh, <laughs> you'll thank me later, mom. Um, but no, it wasn't until I would say 
backtrack. They didn't pay for it. I had to wash, I was on scholarship, so I had to wash windows. I had to like kind of clean the studio. Um, and that was my payment oh, wow. for- They allowed you to do yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. To take Cause I mean, class. especially then coming in as a boy who really wants to dance, yeah. there's, I mean, I'm biased. There's a double standard, sorry. Um, so kind of guys get it a little easier when it comes to money. Like every studio wants boys. So like, yeah. if you- Why is that? Cause they're, they're not as, and it's depending on the area, um, they're not as common. And and boys that want to and that are actually good because you can find anybody especially being young that age yes yeah and I was what sixteen at the time um but yes yeah, so I even like even my studio like if you have a brother that wants to dance tuition is free for him you know what I mean wow to try to see because boys also don't stay long uh because then they'll get heavily into the sports kind of the opposite of what I do yeah they'll mm -hmm. start in dance and all the ballet stuff and then the minute they get eight nine ten they're like oh we're gonna do wrestling yeah, right, yeah, right, yeah, right, yeah, right. we're gonna sure. start getting ready for football yeah um and they kind of fall off so if we can kind of keep them we try to make it financially doable um which is a blessing and a curse because then some guys are get kind of big-headed because they can do whatever they want yeah you know? but for the most part all the guys that i've teach they're very humble and really excited and i feel like as a dude once you make that decision that you want to dance you're going to be great at it and i think just anything like i think anybody once you make that like full wholehearted commitment of like i'm going to do this I'm following your passion this influencer i'm going to be the, a chef i'm going to do you know what i mean i want to be a choreographer there's nothing else stopping you but you you know what i mean um so yeah, yeah, it's a lot. So did you dance in high school? I did. Um, I uh, junior year I tried out for the dance team. I made JV, and I was like, oh, Ooh, I'm good. you yeah. had the little suit, little yeah. sweatsuit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you were pictures. Um, it was trash, yep. absolute trash. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> and I, I, I'm not even kidding. I, I found I was I would like like look up my years on uh, YouTube, like, Los Osos Dance 2009, 2009, 2010, and just block, report, report. <laughs> like, Stop <laughs> with it. We're like, there will be like, no evidence. No. That's not good. Report, Why did I do bully. that? Like, dang it. Um, <laughs> report, really, report. Now I'm bad that I did it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's actually a really funny. No, the <laughs> truth is <laughs> Virus. Virus, Virus. See? <laughs> oh, and then senior year at Maid Varsity, kind of started my own hip hop team there as well with my best friends on the dance team. Um, and kind of, I, I was that kid that was in every, like, obviously high schools have rallies and everything. And I, I was in every performance wise. Like, uh, there was, we had a thing called Backwards, which is like the Sadie yep. Hawkins mm -hmm. back in the day. Yeah. Yeah. Backwards dance. I was yeah. backwards Prince, so you get nominated. So, of course, I had a full dance. And then I was on Varsity Dance Team, Everything so of course, I'm like, doing that. And then I had my own hip hop team, so of course, you're doing that too. So, like, the whole rally was me. And I'm like, I better <laughs> I win. Like, I better win. <laughs> I better win. <laughs> I did. <laughs> the whole rally was <laughs> Spoiler alert. Um, there you go. But no, uh, and yes, I danced. And then I did, uh, I went to Mount Sac for college. And that's where I can kind of credit um, my coach. Stephanie Green was. So then, is her daughter Alexis Green? And yes. Oh my gosh. Ah, see? I, uh, yeah. So her. Oh my gosh. She is like my childhood best friend's mom. That's so. Crazy. I was in the Green household all the day. You that's were in the Green house. The Green house. Did not play. She was. <laughs> no, like, she didn't. Well, on this team because you have a good toe touch. You're kind of. You're not. Ooh, no, like, she was good. hard. She was a hard ass. And I, I, I was, I was coming in from high school. Good. Literally, but coming in from high school, like being one of the only guys dancing, that head was real big. Yep. And I was like, I'm gonna do this. Watch oh, this. No. Yeah. Uh -huh. I got signed with the agency right out of high school, so I was like, oh, I'm watch this she did not get <laughs> it she didn't care um no. but i credit and she benched me from a couple comps like she like, <laughs> was not uh she, she wasn't afraid to like put people in their place at, at all. all and that's how it I humbled you out. a little bit yeah. though right oh, no the head and made you better <laughs> yeah <laughs> and literally she's the one that kind of saved because i feel like there's such a when you when you leave high school especially with the way i was leaving i was leaving like backwards king i was leaving like the captain of all this you were leaving with the head this you know, size the, yep. yes and just excited and everybody's like praising you and everything um and to then now i have to work hard for this um and that was what kind of instilled a little bit of work ethic in me because i was on a team with the girls who i've seen on youtube and that's when kind of youtube was popping um dance wise and i was like oh my god I've, i watched her videos or i've seen her at competitions like wow how am i on this team with her um she's fantastic i suck uh <laughs> But that like high school, college for sure helped me out, and then I still have like lifelong friends from there. Um, and then I had two classes left. Decided to drop out like an idiot. And I, was like, <laughs> ah, I got signed. I'm going to do the LA life. I didn't book anything for two years. Oh, I didn't gosh. know. I didn't. Oh, know. welcome to the real world. Yeah. Of but dance. nobody teaches yeah. you like no. hey, when you go to an audition. Like my first big audition was uh, Rihanna's Diamond Store. No. Lies. It was uh, Lady Gaga's Born This Way. And I showed up in normal, like, hip-hop clothes. It was, like, gray sweats and a tank top. And everybody else was in, like, their denim, shirtless, 
eyeliner and everything. For I didn't the know you were going to You know what I mean? Yeah. Here I am. I walk in and then instant type cast. They're like, hey, you can go. Thank you so much. And no I was like, way. I didn't even get the chance to dance. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so then did that for a little bit. Um, and then I went back to school, finished those two classes, got my AA. Um, and then kind of just te started teaching then. And then it kind of just blew up. Like started with one dance that did well. Then one dance turns into five. Then I did two studios. Um, so you gave this. up on the auditioning? No, I still did. Oh, okay. So I, the problem with me is that I don't know how to say no. And I want to be all things entertainment. So I want to be into hosting. I was just like, I just did a, uh, the GLAAD Awards in New York. I did the red carpet. I want to get into like, I want my own TV show at some point. Like, yeah. I want everything. Yeah. I could see that. Yeah. I, 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 totally honestly, see that. I could yeah. too. Oh, and I think that like, and you'll it's have hard it because sometimes you do have to kind of close yourself off for, cert for certain seasons in your life. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I'm strictly this right now. Um, but I'm trying to prove to myself that you don't have to do that. Right. And sometimes when you find your lane, things just come. Like, literally, as you're driving, just, oh. There it is. Oh, let yeah. Me, yeah, it's yeah. it's been so cool, and that's how like my life has been for the past five six years. Like I, once I found this, what my true what I'm supposed to be doing, it I haven't asked anybody for anything, and it's it's really cool. Reroutes so and detours, but you're yeah. still gonna get taken to and the same I'm not place. Asking mm -hmm. for work, I'm not. You know what I mean? I'm not auditioning for gigs like, like it's i mean yes and no there's a lot of direct books now because i know the choreographer because i taught his daughter or like i did a commercial yeah. with him um so just i just try to be a good person good energy and but genuine and yeah. like let's i'm just here to have fun yeah like at the end of the day so do, do a lot of i mean like you said they they do favor males because males are hard to come by did you beginning if i take it back all the way to high school did you have a hard time internally with people maybe outside that were giving you a hard time about it like you said you played basketball you were on travel ball you you know i know you were the the king of high school but did, was there like a group of people that were kind of like sour against you because you went from one to the other oh it's weird i i was bullied i would say kindergarten through sixth grade how do you I get bullied in kindergarten People are assholes. It's name. It's just name, and, yeah. I, and I still remember that. I'm, I also have a really good memory, uh, so I remember first and last names of people who they would say. Oh, oh, yeah. what they would say. I remember what I was wearing. Like it's He's got weird. A You're best at everything. Yeah, I remember everything. Um, and it's, yeah, yeah. Um, but I mean, like I said, I've always been gay. Who I, I've always been this myself. You yeah. know what I mean? And just didn't know it at the time. Um, so. I would be playing basketball and tetherball with the dudes, but also playing double dutch with the girls. And some dudes would be like, oh, you're Quintana today. Yeah, and, 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 and I was like, now I'm like, bitch, it's kind of hot. Yeah, I'll, I'll, <laughs> take, I'll take it. Quintana. <laughs> but like things like that. You know, I, mean, yeah. I wasn't getting trash canned and stuff. Like that's different. Um, and I remember when I moved from Pasadena to Rancho, um, I think I went through people just saying things like and it wasn't just me there's like, people the kids are assholes we're yeah. all assholes they are, they are. whether it's me and, the, and back then everybody was taking low blows so if you see somebody big like you were fat you know what yeah. I mean like, yeah you're skinny you know what I mean um but it wasn't until I would say sixth seventh grade when I had that growth spurt and I was like oh what did you say <laughs> so all of a sudden oh you're just looking up now so that's what I thought and then honestly I credit my high school I never had any issues in dance like like the cool part is that everybody was so in integrated in different groups yeah um so yes you would have like the stereotypical cheerleader group and like the dancers but then those people also have groups where we had a group called stan and i think it was called uh sit for socially together and nationally mm -hmm. diverse yep yes i remember mr jeffries mm -hmm. mr jeffries like that, you know what i mean like this is crazy. shout out to mr jeffries <laughs> shout out i so was in his class too he would have to put me sometimes sitting in the hallway because i wouldn't shut up yeah. but no listen way. mr jeffries <laughs> uh -huh. we had you to sit up close next to him yep. <laughs> But yeah. it's stuff like that. But it's like, yeah, you, not you know me I mean? though, right? <laughs> 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 Never. Um, but it's groups like that where you have the football players in in class or in uh, a separate group with somebody who's a little more on the shy side. You would call them like a little geeky, mm -hmm. or you know what I mean? Or you have somebody who's like super artsy fartsy and like the guitar player, somebody weird. Or then you have somebody next to me, and then we're all chilling and talking and like. So there was never really issues in high school. I think the issues came with the parents because they were again it was so unconventional Absolutely, especially there um, and then the real life oh my god is my son I, my son is gay oh shoot there's stuff that's happening besides the dance thing like life is happening and me getting caught watching stuff a couple <laughs> times and like this this the normal alleged like, yeah right alleged the virus yeah. oh, were the attacking. virus from lime wire you know what i mean <laughs> the computer froze a couple times <laughs> <laughs> oh god that's right I was like, oh my god, god. literally <laughs> 
there's so many stories y'all but uh but no i, I would say the i can't even say a problem because yes they had an issue with it but it still wasn't i mean i i i think i was really lucky and blessed because as as much as they didn't agree with it i was never like ostracized it wasn't like you can't come into they my accepted house you, know you. I mean? like you warmed up to it because at the end of the day i'm still your favorite son my sister has a favorite card um, but no so then and then like i said then my sister was on the other hand the one who was doing what she's supposed to do she was the one who was getting the straight a's and like i'm a 4.3 and i'm also on the softball team and all this <laughs> stuff and so they were like okay so quinn's a wild one he's gonna do what he wants she's the one following a path and We'll just let them live. And they learn that very soon, like very quickly. Yeah. He's the type to just let them go. Well, I, I think, I think, and I kind of want to stay here just because I think it's really important, especially like with what's going on in, in this today's day age, world, right? Yeah. Today's world. And um, you are a pretty big figure in the industry, right? Like you're, shoot, you were Rams, Super Bowl champs. I hate saying that. <laughs> Rams, Super Bowl champs. <laughs> Uh, you are an amazing race. So you do, you, there is a lot of people that follow you because of who you are, right? So when you say you were always gay, like, what does that mean? Like kindergarten, first grade, second like, grade? Like I had a crush on my, I knew it was a crush. I didn't know, I didn't know it. But now that I think about it, I was like, oh my gosh, I like my PE teacher. And what, what grade were you? This is like little, like kindergarten first oh. grade like i and you know, i used to comment to my friends like oh my god his calves looks like steaks oh my gosh like, and, <laughs> but like little things like that like, yeah. i didn't know that was me like well i don't say flirting but right. having a little crush but i was of like course. oh my gosh like but i was always grabbing it was weird yes yeah, little mm -hmm. things um and i have small caps so it's fine <laughs> but, <laughs> but no so I, and i think i mean i tried i had a couple girlfriends in high school they knew you know what i mean and we're so good they friends. did know yay um so like I, I, and again this is how do they how do they know so like let's just say high school you're dating girls freshman year when did you come to the realization like i prefer men over women when and then my junior girlfriend junior soul was all, they only lasted over the summer right when we were all bored um <laughs> when she tried to put my hand in her pants and i was like <laughs> <laughs> this is it i can't do it i can't do it we can make out we can do everything else but this <laughs> I can't. I said, I, she was like, oh, I just wanted to test it out. I kind of knew. I was like, oh. oh she's like, I kind of knew. Not you putting a meat to the test. Um, but it was cool because I went to her wedding. You know what I mean? So, uh, so you guys are still awesome. friends. It's fine. Like, like, yeah. I had a lot of cool friends and a lot of cool experiences like that. But, but at that moment, you knew. This oh, is, my gosh. Mm -mm. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, even when it comes to like yeah. stuff that comes up on the internet, and you're like, oh, mm, I think I like that. I'm pretty sure I like that. Yeah. Um, but then you're in your head, you're like, okay, hold on but is this accepted? So I'm going to try everything right now to not be this, but you can't fake that. You, right. you know what I mean? And I learned that really young. I, I feel like high school, again, high school like helped me out a little bit. And I had friends, I had lesbian friends in high school who didn't give a fuck. Like, those was, 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 was kind of dope. I'm not I kidding. Like, Rancho in general is just so diverse, <laughs> yes. but also so it was definitely very, yeah, Literally, I know what you like, mean. There wasn't like, that nonsense of like, we don't fuck with the gays. It's like, no, right. everybody was everybody chilling. Was just, like, mm -hmm. to, to be honest with you, I like, I feel like that, that doesn't happen a lot of places. Like, I don't like, know. Like, no. I, I don't know why people put this out there. Like, oh yeah, um, it, people bully gay. Like, I've never, honestly, truly, and maybe you know, I haven't been outside my bubble, but I've been to LA. I've been in the IE. Um, I went to school right here in in um, Arroyo and Almani. It was never an issue. It was like literally, oh, okay, cool. Like, yeah. you prefer, do you? Yeah, yeah. You do, do you? I actually didn't. Even so, when I went to, like, like I said, we we know you know same people, yes. but I've never seen anybody really get bullied bullied for that as well. I mean, I, I mean, obviously, it does happen because there's people of that speak out. Of course, it absolutely does. In different areas, of course, yeah, yeah and it I think, definitely. I think that's why it's important, like you internalizing it, but being very open about like how you felt, because there's probably kids right now that feel like you. Like, I do feel this kind of way, but my parents disagree. I'm going to try everything I can to go down this path. I'm going to like women or I'm going to like, you know, whatever your gender is, I'm just going to go down this path. Like you seem like you're pretty solid in the way that, that you handle things. Like you just don't care. Even at a young age for you to just say, Hey, I'm going to not do travel ball. And I'm just going to well, from a black home too, right? Like, yeah. I going to say, like, <laughs> let's like put that out there. Like you, like you're a black mom and dad are like sports the in their sports and school. Yeah. This you know? And so, the fact that you were able to and then just go on your path like i feel like yeah so so do you have like i mean there's probably people listening like what would be the best advice i mean if you'd give anyone that's kind of dealing with i don't even want to say dealing with it but maybe feeling the emotions that you feel like would you just say coming out to your parents is probably the best thing you can do like right away or or is there like a more easier way to do it or i mean i would, would you say suggest? if that's 
because not everybody has the opportunity to come out. Right. Um, um, right. So I think you find a, uh, your chosen family is what I always say. Like, I got lucky again. I, I get that. lucky that I have so many close friends and family and dance moms and dance parents that just like love, love them. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. even if I, if there was an issue at home, I don't have to really worry about that because I have my chosen family. So I think just try to find that tribe um, of people that support you, you support them and just really try to like find that connect. And because they're everywhere. Yeah. And especially nowadays with the internet, it's like a blessing and a curse. Like you really can find anybody to talk about anything. Like there's so many apps for that. There's like, then you can be stupid. Like humble, what is it? Hinge best friend? Oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, but there's so many, there's so many ways. I mean, and again, it might be easier for somebody who's so extroverted, mm -hmm. but there's so many ways to meet friends. And I think getting into things like dance or things that you enjoy doing is the only way you can make friends. You know what I mean? Like, if you didn't enjoy working out, you're not gonna make friends at the fucking gym. Like, why would you do it? You know what yeah. I mean? Um, so again, all my friends are dancers. So having that common knowledge yeah. and that common love for something that also helps out with finding like your your people and your tribe. So if you if you're struggling, try to j find a group of people or find try to find a group within your interests that you can succeed in. You know what I mean? Because everybody everybody's so loving nowadays. Like. And yes, you would have your negative ones, but for the most part, people are good people. Yeah, I agree. No, I really feel that. And uh, yeah, again, again, I think it's important coming from someone like you that's that's reached a pinnacle of success. You know, there's some people that probably think like, I can't get into dance because of this, or I can't do this. And hearing you and and your feelings and how you went through it is is important for some people that are probably listening. Like in high school, we actually have like a lot of high school kids that listen, and it trips me out because I'm like, oh man, I thought this, <laughs> I thought some of these topics would be over their head, but you know, like you said, with social media, there's just so much content out there and access yeah and access that it's like it, it's crazy that um even like at my daughter's school i'll go in and they're like oh i listen to your podcast i'm like aren't you like a teacher's aide like uh, like you know and it's it's crazy You're like but it's what just, episode was that yeah i know <laughs> <laughs> which one did you really listen to but but especially now that i'm a parent i just kind of feel like you know because you hear you hear things where one side will be like oh you know you're groomed to think this way and you can change it you know and some religions are like oh if you if you pray enough you're not going to be like this or whatever it is i, I feel like it's important especially because we have you on this platform right now for you to kind of you know give your own experience and how you feel and i, I think you did a good job of yeah, kind of clearing that up it just seems like everything was so easy for you though i hate saying it but yeah it's not, i feel like i'm no spoiled. no it's but, not, yes, but, but, but i mean it's it's and family of it all. You different. don't yeah. have. Not everyone has to it have this have like have crazy story. traumatic yes. story. Yeah. Like, yes. like you were. That goes to show. Like you were just. You know. Like, like you said, you were blessed was because to have it was self inflicted. Right. Because I was being an idiot. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean stuff like that. But I didn't. I. I, I don't have a crazy traumatic story like that I that's think good though and i feel like great. the normal 90 like 97 percent of people don't have a traumatic story yeah. and they're trying to be like well because it's not that extreme yeah, it's not important yeah, yeah. and up, then yeah. they create their own chaos so you're, you're bringing you. normalcy to it like mm -hmm. you don't have to have normal. a <laughs> yeah you don't have to have some traumatic story <laughs> define, I mean, define you know normal <laughs> <laughs> so let, let's get into your, to your career what, what came first the rams or amazing race Ramps. Yeah. Ramps. Okay, so you auditioned for them when? 2018. Okay, did you have like someone tell you to, or did you were like, I, this is no, LA, this is my I team? I didn't know that was a thing, to be honest. Um, I was at a Laker game at the Wednesday before auditions, and again, I've, at this point, I've been dancing within college and a couple all-star teams in and, and the industry for like six years now, so you start creating like a little circle. Of course. And I was like, wait, I danced with her on that team. She was my friend in college. And I'm watching like Lake. Well, as I, I was as, as I was watching the Laker girls. Yes. And I was like, wait, I know these girls. Like, what the heck? And I was and I was like, why can't I do that? Because for me, boys, it was either you go the New York route, you go the LA route. But there was no like home. I don't want to say part time game, but like, what can we do part time just for right. dancing? Yeah. That's still like relevant and gives mm -hmm. you a pedestal and a platform. Like, I want to do something cool without having to like, go on tour for eight months. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, so I was like, I had my friend Rocky, who was on the team, and I was like, hey, when are our auditions for Rams? And she goes, they're Sunday, but why? And I was like, I think I want to audition. And she was like, you know, there's no boys, right? And I was like, that's fine. I mean, wow. So, so you, oh, you there wow. was no, so there was what, what no was guys whatsoever. I'm the first one. First? Yeah. Ooh, yeah. wow. <laughs> well, there's two of us. Yeah. yeah first. Um, but yeah, 2018, literally I showed up, and even when I, because I had registered that night at the game, and I was like, let me just go online. And, and what are the odds of you doing this the Sunday before? 
thank like, you. When registration wow. closed that Friday, and I was like, oh, I'm a good thing I did it. <laughs> um, but it, I even knew that they weren't even ready for dues because I got the confirmation email back, and I was like, hey, attire, make sure you wear <laughs> <laughs> tights, your bikini briefs, and your, uh, your sports bra. And I was like, okay, well, I'm just going to come into the tank tops and shorts. Yeah. Um, and I showed up, and again, it was a lot of old friends and old students and things that I've seen. And I was like, oh, this is kind of cool. Like, and again, it, it's just another audition for me. If you tell me no, it's no. But what you're not going to do is not value my dancing. So I, I knew that walking in that I had to be the best dancer mm -hmm. because I was like, I'm not trying to take somebody's spot. I want to be an audition. Mm -hmm. And I think in order for me to do that, I have to be, I think that you've had a podcast about this. I have to be on undeniable. Like you have to look at me and be like, fuck, that's him. Like I want to, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Especially, and I didn't know there was no boys like that, like mm -hmm. league wise. So I was like, oh, maybe just Rams don't have them. Sure. Um, but yes, I showed up. and then Delusional. Was, Thank you. Just in my own bubble. Don't even know what I'm doing. Um, but then there was another dude who was on the team with me who was there too. And we kind of had similar paths. We both worked at Disney different times. We both were on the same all-star team. We kind of competing against each other back in college. Um, so I was like, oh, he's here. Okay. Okay. No, I really have to dance. Oh, shit. Okay. <laughs> and I was like, actually, let's like put all that aside, all the craziness. And they're not taking one of us. It's either we kind of have a similar look, yeah. like saying we look alike, but both black representing like he's, I think he's mixed. Um, and I was like, let's do this together. Like, so we went across the floor, did it together. And then when we did an uh, audition, we like make sure we went together. Um, so that way it was like, oh, shoot, they are good. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Um, cause I really don't think if one of us would audition by itself, we wouldn't, I think it, because it was a part, like a, a you guys went together and we did, they yeah. needed uh -huh. both. They, it, was, it made sense. Um, made it and literally wow. made it that, uh, there was, the process is kind of crazy. You have like one day of prelims, the vets come in another cut and then two weeks of, of rehearsals and interviews and everything. And then the finals was two weeks later on the Sunday. Um, so stressed, the news is there, and everybody's like, oh my gosh, it was like, boys auditioning. And I'm like, I just want to make this damn team. Like, I don't care about these interviews. With like, like, um, so they made, made it a big thing. Oh my gosh, once we, once they posted like, oh, auditions, and they started seeing dudes, they were like, whoa, okay. And then literally, I'm not kidding, life, <laughs> I would say media life, like just blew the fuck up like i've never seen like i'm i've been dancing not my whole life but for a while right um and it was crazy to kind of see wait that's my face on the fucking news like, <laughs> wow what the heck and i'm just watching my mom watches the news every night and i'm in bed with her and i'm like oh that's oh, my me. mom that's me I was like, wait, <laughs> wait, wait, what the heck? um so so the news were, were they taking like a, a negative connotation of that or were they no. like once we made it the first thing we did was good morning america and everything that comes out of that show is positive right um and it was kind of making me nervous because i obviously you celebrate so i was like mom i made it i'm gonna go to buffalo wild wings <laughs> <laughs> so then i was my best friends out the morning ranch show and they were out and I oh the beef dumps and ranch show yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, right off the creek literally <laughs> <laughs> and, lit. and then i get a call from this random number and it was uh our marketing manager and she was like hey um, congratulations on making a team. Da, 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 da. Just letting you know, um, we're sending a car for you at four. And I was like, oh, dope, 4 p.m. I get us up for my, my classes. And she was like, no, 4 a.m. And I was like, oh, in three hours? <laughs> and I start crying. I'm like, I'm drunk. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh. So I was like, trying to figure out how to sober up. They send the car. It was freaking dope. It's like, they, they have the, all the outfits for us to try on. Everything's oversized. Like, nobody knows what they're doing fashion wise yet. Sobered up um, quick. It was real quick. <laughs> real quick. <laughs> Um, and our first interview was Good Morning America, uh, and that was insane. And then that's when it, it kind of just took off. And wow. every outlet from like People to Vogue to ESPN, we were on the radio with uh, like Ryan Seacrest. So we did, uh, and this is all before media training, right? You know I mean? like, right. Like someone told you how to act. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Thing, yeah. I, 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 I'm just charismatic a little yeah. bit. So I was like, okay, don't sound like an idiot. But, and they were all starting to ask around the same questions and everything. And then we would get like a little rhythm of how to piggyback off each other. Um, but then like after that, it just kind of, there was a lot of great. And I always knew don't read comments, um, unless you want to find something. Mm -hmm. Um, so I never really did. And Instagram starts blowing up and everything. And then I started getting nervous because I started getting packages and I was like, and then my mom's getting calls at work. And I'm like, how are people finding out like where you live, where I live, where my mom, my cousin, who I don't talk to, mm -hmm. who's real rough around the edges. <laughs> Now they're like, like, hey, what's up? up? Hey, yeah. hey, I got a call from a uh, British, I think it was, what is it, British? I don't want to say British CNN, but it was one of those like oh, American overseas, channels overseas. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, uh, talking, asking about you. And I was like, why are you? I don't do yeah, why you? Are you? <laughs> yeah, I'm like, oh my gosh. Um, so we bring it to the attention. Like, I just don't feel safe. Like, yeah. as much as this is so cool, like I'm getting like 
welcome packages from random like no return address but like oh, what wow. the heck this is weird like how like and yes it's all good for me personally but like what's to say it's not you know what i mean yeah. like, i'm again i don't think i'm anybody i was walking down victoria garden people were like oh my god congratulations and i was like what the fuck like, <laughs> like you know what i mean it's yeah, like, yeah. again i just made another team mm -hmm. um because i wasn't trying to make this history or whatever yeah. it was so it's like it was nuts that whole first year to be honest um because then one, I don't like Raider fans. So if you're a Raider fan, you guys can all oh. talk. You're rude. I've never, I've never <laughs> met. Amorous. They are the rudest fan base. Um, <laughs> what else? I'm, and I'm generalizing too because I, I can't. Uh, that's why we, we had a, uh, my first preseason game. All the news channels are out and we were doing like a little walk. And this was back when we were at the Coliseum. Um, oh, yeah. And and it was Raiders versus Rams. And I'm telling you, I again, I don't get bullied like that. I don't really care. These ladies was like, you fuck it. We hate you. Da, 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 da. Wow. And then I was like, you know what? I'm gonna make them love me. So then my line at the time was stationed in front of them. After we did a little walk around, and I was like, watch this. By the end of the game, they're gonna love me, and they did. Like, you have to give people a chance. Um, and I don't know why me being in uniform was so threatening to you. Yeah. There were so many dudes that was like, where's the girls? I don't want to take pictures. Right. You know, I was like, dude, they don't want like they don't want you anyway. Yeah. <laughs> sweaty and fat. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean, like nobody, they don't want you anyway. Yeah. Right. If I was here or not. Um, and you probably have a better chance with me, to be honest. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, think that's what it is. But even then, you're right. You know I mean? Yeah. Um, but again, then once people saw me dance, I saw us dance, it was like, oh, okay, 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 they're, they're dope. And the same ladies, we did another walk around at the end of the game. We're sorry, we're sorry, we're sorry. Mm -hmm. We love you guys. That's and I was cool, like, though. that's kind of dope. That's, so yeah. Yeah. that's when I was like, okay, it's a, there's a bigger purpose here. And as much, there's always going to be negative with anything. Yeah. Like, that's just what it is. You got to change um, the narrative. You're changing the narrative. Changing so, the narrative. So, yeah. so in that year, did the, did it, did that happen across the NFL? Did they hire uh, uh, males for cheerleaders? Or was it like strictly the Rams? That and everyone followed. followed. And then everybody kind of followed. Um, so now there's more teams with male oh, yeah, dancers. Oh gosh, yeah. every, almost every yeah. team. Like since then, though, since yeah. you guys went on, you guys were the first yeah. two. Then, and then since Saints then, did it that same year. Um, they added this dude Jesse, who's so dope. And then after that is when the Bucks started adding up. And yeah, I, I feel like every Patriots. I feel like every NFL that's team I've seen has it. To know though that you were like the you know, first. It's crazy. Yeah, and then I'm like, wow, awesome. I I didn't that's know that's history. It really it, is. And I think it's cool that people get to experience what I experienced. Right. That was another reason why I left. I did four years and I was like, okay, I did super, two, super, two Super Bowls. Sorry, Jason. Um, <laughs> and flex, yeah. and so you uh, chose to leave. But I chose to leave because I was like, okay, I did what I can do. I've already gone on all the pro tours I can go on because uh, NFL sends cheerleaders to um, different military bases mm -hmm. around the world. And I've been on like seven. And I was like, so I did that. I was captain. I was like, so I, there really isn't anything else I can do. And there's also girls on the team who just stay just to stay. And I was like, and this isn't going to be the biggest thing I'm going to do in my life. I know that for a fact. There's more. This is a stepping stone, which yeah. my coach has always said. Um, use this as a platform. Do what you got to do to get to the next step. And I was like, okay, I think going out on top is dope. Was it hard? Absolutely. Because it becomes your part of your identity for a little bit. Um, but then I knew that, okay, I'm, I'm going to do some cool stuff. You know what I mean? Again, I'm going to let, like, there can never be another first in, this, in this aspect. Um, and now, like, I mean, there's, I think, Rams this year, I just choreographed from two weeks ago, and they have seven, um, which is dope. And I was wow. like, wow. And now you're cool. still with the family because now you're doing the choreography. Yeah. And you're still, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. And I get to be on the other side. So kind of cool. do you do choreography only for the Rams or do you do other oh. teams now as well? Oh, so I do. Or another, like. Personally, mm -hmm. um, NFL wise, I have Rams. I have uh, 49ers um, trying to get in with Raiderettes. But I do like how they're like the. I thought only. you don't like the Raiders. I like their dancers. Uh, <laughs> uh -huh. uh -huh. like no, no, it's, it's, it's just like, it's just like even lying. no offense, even like Dodger fans can be bad too. Rough. You know what I mean? I'm like, not trying to fight nobody. This is a game. I'm <laughs> you. Literally, same. You're having playing. You mean I gotta come <laughs> to the game and worry about if I'm gonna walk uh, out safe? Thank you. <laughs> no, I'm you. <laughs> um, a lot of NBA. Who else? From our kitchen to yours, this episode is brought to you by Meals by Mill. Enjoy healthy, delicious meals right to your door every day. Use promo code MIX15 at checkout for 15% off your first order. Serving LA, Inland Empire, and Orange County areas. Order today. No, I'm blanking. Indiana Pacers, Boston Celtics, Wow. Um, Sacramento Kings. I do a lot of chore a personal choreo for them. Golden State Warriors, Portland Trail Blazers. Wow. Um, trying to go through the States. I've seen stuff for the Spurs. I've seen Utah Jazz do some things, Denver Nuggets. Um, 
I don't know why the NFL teams are playing. So now that you're saying, like, you're, and you do stuff for NBA. Yeah. Obviously. Yeah. So now, how does your dad feel about that? You're like, look, I'm still, oh, no, I'm they still, have I'm issues still with you. basketball. <laughs> no, my, they stopped caring when mm-hmm. I booked my first commercial for Fresh and Easy back in the day. And that, Fresh and like, Easy. Yeah. Fresh and Easy. Yeah. Then they went out of business. Yeah. Like, oh, was it me? Uh, <laughs> that was your fault. That was your fault, for sure. Um, but literally, that was, uh 2011 that was my first year in college and after that first commercial and i was like you know what dad i'm gonna pay the water bill this month you know this little thing i mean yeah. I, and i could have obviously paid yeah. more but i'm like i don't know rent what yeah how much that yeah. was like i'm still a little uh-huh. in my head um so i was like i'll pay that mom i'll pay the phone bill whatever whatever and they're like oh wait you're serious and i was like this i'm like you thought i was joking like i will make it one day right. i'm gonna like and the goal is to obviously everyone wants to like give back to their parents and like that's the goal now, is to really now, take care I, of I really them i'm gonna do that yeah. kind of dope. um Especially now that I moved out and like we're all kind of separate, they just divorced. So I'm like, oh wow, it's kind of, it was weird. It's been a weird year, transition yeah. year. I'm not gonna lie, after Rams, after the Amazing Race, and then going from like, oh my god, I like having cameras on me. What am I doing in my life? Am I still teaching kids? Is that a bad thing now? Like it's it's so yeah. oh, such yeah. a mind fuck. Um, and then parents issues, and I was like, oh my gosh, I don't know. One, I lived in this bubble of like. I was the only family out of my friends. I'm only friend out of my friend group whose parents still together. Still so I was together. Like, not one of you guys. Like, <laughs> literally. It's like, not sad. like when, I high, when I was in high school, I valued my parents being together so much because yeah. I was like, I'm the only one. Like, everyone's like parents are divorced. It was like, no, it, yeah. It, it, it yeah. Personal. Because personal. Yeah, personal. It really was. Because then it's like, but now my dad passed away but now all, all i know for my future relationship is just like them being together and that's like what love is like you work you you yeah. work through the fight so i get what you're saying yeah i couldn't like, even imagine crazy. but did they wait for you to leave the house oh no no no! So, if you want to talk about it i don't care um <laughs> so uh but they had talked about it for like a couple years ago like hey they're thinking about splitting and we were all, like family meeting me and my sister and I'm like, okay. okay that's fine i mean my mom's in her prime yeah she's chilling you know what i mean um but then i get so September happens. I go to Miami for my birthday. This like, little like me trip. I come back and my mom was like, "Hey, we need to talk." And I was like, "Hey, whatever, dope." Then my dad texts me, "Hey, we need to talk." And I was like, "Oh gosh, what's happening?" Yeah, like is this <laughs> cancer? Is this like I, I, yeah. I was literally yes. bracing myself for like I get it. Okay, prostate cancer. My dad like it's gonna be, like the, the worst thing you can think of. And then he sits me outside. He goes, "So me and your mom are splitting." And I was like, "Finally, okay, cool, dope." You know what I mean? And he goes, "But I gotta tell you why." And I was like, mm-hmm. "Oh geez." I'm not even putting his business out there, but whatever. Um, my dad was caught. Plot twist, plot twist, plot twist. Mind you, military man uh, from the South. Why do I feel coach. like we're, we're, I want to feel like I know where this is going. <laughs> Sexting another dude. I was just going to say, I, 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 I knew it. I knew it. Right before you said plot, I already knew it. I, I, felt, I was like, your dad's gay. Whoa. Yeah. Um, so then I was like, well, what is, so then there's like, there's multiple sides to this. Yeah. So I have my mom, I'm, I'm a mama's boy. Mama's pissed. Mama's hot. Ready to like, ready to Medea people. Like just. Hey, but at least she's not. At least part of people. Well, at least you're not leaving me for another woman. Okay. Like, <laughs> <laughs> she's happy. But then I'm like, okay, hold on. So dad, what is this? I'm like, I'll hop the boot up. Okay, that's cool. fine. This is great. This is fine. It's like, like, as long as it's not another woman, we're good. No, just kidding. Seriously? But I'm oh serious. No, I was like, yeah. well, what does this mean? I was like, are you gay? Are you bi? Are you fluid? Like any. He was like, oh, my dad's 56. I don't know. What does that mean? And I was like, you can't be, you can't be fucking shit up and then not, not know what it is. You can't be fucking shit up. I thought that you're having this conversation with your dad, so, like, yeah. Like, yeah. Literally. Oh, my God. What a, oh my what a full circle moment, though. Literally. Like, what a full circle moment. For you. You're like, so, so that's, that's what you happened, though. So is he, did he still continue, like, what? Like, oh, we don't talk about that. Oh. Um, <laughs> excuse me. My dad has always been the introverted one. Yeah. The quiet one. It's just like, yeah. I would drink on the patio and chill. Yeah. Um, so even... When things were like fine, we never had a very emotional relationship. Mm-hmm. It's always been like, cool, congratulations, dope. You know what I mean? That's it. Um, so then I was like, well, as your gay son, should should I be there for? Like, what what do I? Is <laughs> because I'm mad. Like, I'm yeah, actually mad. I'm like, we could have fixed this years ago, and we could have split, and not, not have this issue. Now I'm like, now I gotta move out at some point. And yeah. like, I lived a very spoiled life. Yeah, until I was thirty. Um, You're over here ruining everything. I was like, geez. <laughs> And I was always told myself to get out by 27, but then pandemic happened. Yes. And that that wasn't happening. I uh-huh. would have been homeless. Um, <laughs> I didn't know money back then. <laughs> I didn't know how to use it. Uh, but no, so then like, he still doesn't, like, he's, I don't know what he's doing. He's not the type to try to help himself. So right. he's not the therapy type. He's just like, he's trying to find a place in Hemet to move. And I was like, you're just trying to like barricade yourself by yourself. Like, that's like, that's not, there's still life to live. Of course. You know what I mean? So my mom was already on her like, 
She's like, when are we going to Mexico? We're taking, I'm taking her to Mexico for our birthdays in September. <laughs> She's ready. Stella's getting her group back again. Yeah. Um, <laughs> sheesh. Um, so that's been like, and then my sister was mad. She was like, do you know you're, you have to apologize to your son? And he was like, why? And she was like, because you not remember what you told him when he came out and you guys found out when he was 18, da 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 da, da. He was like, no. She was like, well, I do. <laughs> and you were an asshole. So, and I was like, oh, my sister's a real one. So yeah. shout out to you, Daphne. Like, <laughs> she's like, she'll fight for anybody. She'll yeah. fight for me. Cause like, as much as I'm like extroverted, I get, I don't like confrontation like yeah. that. So she's the one that's like, no, that's wrong. Mm -hmm. and I was like, oh, fuck. Okay. Well, I mean, your dad. Wow. Your dad grew up in a different era, so for Absolutely. him for him to external like internally digest everything that he's feeling and he's going through and what he went through, it's probably it's probably a mind fuck for him. Like, okay, I always knew that you were and I was kind of you know, but like I was hard on you and you know, so there's a lot yeah. probably going on with him because the older generation they just they're they're not don't gonna talk understand. About it. They're they not yeah, talk about yeah. It. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. They was like no. uh, uh, crazy. Yeah. My my dad like we weren't. I don't want to say we weren't allowed, but if we cried, it was like an issue. Like he wouldn't even have like if you were like crying or frustrated. It's like why are you crying? It's very it's really, so many more things that are harder. Like like you're a man. Like you don't yeah. you don't cry. You, mm -hmm. you you suck it up and you it's go on enough. with the next. Yeah. And even sports sports yeah. taught you like Big. hey if you got hurt and you're like oh shit Rip it off yep. walk it off walk it off. So like a lot. so he's going through the, all the emotions of like man I was probably an asshole to you while I was going through it. Now I'm here. Now the whole world has changed. I mean, now it's like you said, are you fluid? Or he's like, what the hell? Does I, that I, I, yeah. I just know, that I, you know, I so it's think, a lot for yeah, me. Yeah, I'm just sitting here thinking like, imagine how many people there are still right now, like who could benefit who are, from talk like this. Yes, yeah. and who are really like not living in their truth and they're going to die not living in their Literally. truth and yeah. so unhappy or and then you start thinking like well no wonder why suicide rates are so high like there's so I many things yep. that people you really don't know what people yeah. are going through and and just to hear the story it's like imagine yeah. how many more like men out there men or women out there yeah. that are in the same situation and they're not living in their like truth and they because they don't feel that they're able to like be who they are because yeah. they're not yeah. accepted or they have families already or they don't want to let this down like yeah. Wow, that's crazy. No, I, I have a, I have a, uh, uh, a client right that kind of went through a similar situation. Um, his dad was an alcoholic all through his childhood. You know, was abusive to him, abusive to his mom. He's like, I remember my dad making me make him drinks. You know, all through childhood, college, and it wasn't until he left the college that his dad finally told him, like, dude, I've been such an asshole because I've been, I'm gay, and I don't know how to say it. I don't know how to, you know, I divorced your, divorced your mom because I like men. And so fast yeah. forward now, you know, they run a successful business. The dad has a wow. husband. Wow. He doesn't drink anymore. Wow. Yeah. The only reason why he was drinking because he, he, he had that yeah. side and he just didn't know how to. to it get. was like his escape. But, also, but yeah. also back in the day, it wasn't something it's that you're accepted. able to yeah. to go out there and say, especially if you're married with a kid, you know, and he was like, you know, this whole time I told my dad, like, dude, it's okay. You know, now that I know what you went through and why, yeah. like he's been the perfect grandfather the perfect dad you know now he, he again he's he's, he's remarried free. yeah yeah so he's like he's like if you would have known my dad back then and you see him now because you've talked to him you would not even know it's the same person how wow. happy he is how nice he is yeah. he was not like that when he said he was very quiet very cold. short very cold but now you know why you know so um i want to talk to your client because like, i don't know what the like is it my place is it my because again in my family we never talked about emotional things mm -hmm. yeah. i think my dad after that conversation was the first time he gave me a hug in like years. Wow. Oh, wow. Like, oh my God, love you, dad. I love you too. I was like, oh my gosh. Yeah. Okay. So I'm like, is it my place? We're not that type of family also, but is yeah. it me? Is it up to me to open this door? You know but now I mean? do you sit there and think like maybe you're not that type of family because he was, he was the way he was it. because he was holding was on to this so deeply, you know, inside? Okay. I mean, it could, be, I, I just think again, the way they were raised, like I said, my mom was a yeah. New Yorker. Uh, so even that strong really, personality, strong personality. You know what I mean, we'll always get through a strong yeah. black woman. Like I'm just, I'm. I don't myself. need anybody. I don't, yeah. Yes, you <laughs> know what I mean. And then he is same kind of situation where like they don't talk about that stuff, and mm. we're just gonna have fun. We're just gonna have fun. Uh, so I'm like, is it up to me? Like I invited him over Father's Day because I was like, well, one, you need to see my new place. Two, um, I haven't seen in a long time. Yeah. And three. I have these crates that need to get moved. It's those yeah. ones. Yeah, it's yeah. been someone, like, 20. You know, I was like, get him out. My couch is coming. Um, so we came over. It was cool. And again, like we, we never like talked much anyway before yeah. this. I was like, okay, let's put some music on. Let's just yeah. show. Like, do you want lasagna? Like we can yeah. post made something. So just having that was kind of cool. Um, me and mom talk every day. Like, that's nothing's changed. Yeah. Like she's living her best life in Rancho still. Um, 
but no it's weird because now i'm like okay hold on parents are getting older so you start thinking about stuff like that and you're like hold on how can i make i don't say the last of it because that sounds so sad but, but no, I know, kind of it is and i think older, it is up like to how, you, you know, yeah how do i make uh -huh. this this next season of like this next yeah. ne next era great yeah no, i agree with you if we're playing armchair therapist which we have no education in this right but if i'm just hearing your story and, and knowing you as a person and kind of putting myself into where like the situation your dad is i feel like who better to to broach the subject than you and it's not like hey dad let's go to pride in hollywood of and course shock I'm the hell out of you no it's more like just even, i don't even like that yeah, yeah. <laughs> Like, it's more so just on. being there for him because now he probably feels like you don't want him to go into isolation and probably mm -hmm. you're the you're the the best person to be there for him oh, in yeah. this time and to just show like look i'm still here with you like mm -hmm. you don't have to talk about that stuff we don't have to talk about it ever again if you don't yeah. want to but, but like i'm alone. still here for you and i yeah, accept yeah, you for yeah. whatever it is that you did we all you know not to say that right. it was a mistake what he did or obviously with your mom which how kind of you should have talked, how you went about it was wrong exactly. yeah that wasn't right but it's like okay then how do we move forward and grow because you're right time is short and you don't know the last yeah. time you're gonna you know see what, this to, person you know what i mean like um, obviously i mean my dad and my mom are still married so my dad didn't come out or anything like that but um like for childhood wise like no we used to get hit we never yeah. i never remember my dad saying oh i love you or i'm so proud of you it yeah. never Same. happened it was like go get the belt but oh it was all God, but, <laughs> but he was also an immigrant and that was the way he was raised and he's taught like hey hard life so it wasn't until like we got older and i forced myself dad come give me a hug oh uh, okay yeah was like that. and i told him i love him and then we, you know, all of us siblings had kids, and now he's the softest yes. dude ever meet. But even Same. my brothers, like, just I would make my daughter go give him a hug, would make our nieces and nephew go give him a hug, and then I'm like, man, I never got a childhood like the way he treats my my daughter, mm -hmm. my nieces, or my nephews. I love you, baby. You're so beautiful. I'm like, so, I it's never. It's so got, interesting. Yeah. Exactly. I see, when yeah. I see my mom with my nieces and yeah. nephews too, but she, her thing was always just like she didn't grow up with her parents yeah. like saying I love you and stuff. So mm -hmm. then like they didn't. You know they love you, obviously. Yeah. You know what I mean. Yeah, now, what I and now it's like now that I'm like 36, and so I hear it often. You know, now, but it was. I remember it being so weird when she'd be like, "Okay, I love you," or this. Yeah. And like, and you're like, "Ooh, you tense up." Yeah. Like, what? Yeah. Like, you're hugging me. Yeah. Stop. You're making me feel uncomfortable. Yeah, like, 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 cry if I'm sad and someone hugs me. I'm just like this is weird but now yeah. i'm like accepting it and mm -hmm. it feels good but it's one of those like uncomfortable awkward like Literally, yeah. things because you're not used to it but yeah, it's like oh. it's an it's, it's, it's so funny it. too it's like it went from like me just giving him a hug and his arms are down to him going like yeah to my back yes. so now his birthday just passed right and god he's talking to us about like oh don't worry when i die i have everything taken care of for you. my dad none of us need your money like you're straight <laughs> yeah, but good. before he left he like gave me a hug and it was like a full-on yeah. like, you know but we harped on him about like not push them but we would always say hey dad i love you hey happy father's day hey this is the baby you know just talking to him more and because he was he's kind of ashamed if we talk about like what we went through when we were kids like being broke or mm -hmm. remember you used to hit us and we used to be so scared <laughs> i never did that like they in his mind like, oh, they so, like, in his mind, he's like no I, I know you guys over exaggerate you know it's <laughs> and then we would laugh about it but as we get older we're like that's a hard pace hard place for him to go revisit yeah you know now that we're adults and we have bills we're like yeah, yeah. i couldn't imagine having three kids only income you know having the stress of stress. everything you had to go yep. through and then to have us little little shits like, yeah, us yeah. little kids running around because i was a bad little kid yeah. you know and then not knowing how to express feelings and i think that's kind of where your dad is he doesn't know how to express it so yeah. it's more like you just did come to my apartment let's have some lasagna yeah. what are you doing next week i'm gonna stop by you just phone calls just to know that you're there yeah, yeah. yeah. it's gonna take some time but i think armchair therapist again yep. yeah um, that's probably the best the best best thing you can do as a son but it's also good for your conscience yeah you know you I can know like you're talking about his later stages because we talk about that as a family and it's like we want him to see the grandkids as much as he can we want to be around him as much as he can not that he's on ill or anything yeah. but you're right like if you think about it like just never know we're hoping 20 years yeah. you know say, isn't that and that like, wait, hold flies on. 20 years flies 20 years like, I, flies. I was 10 yeah. but i was like doing you know what i mean it's like, <laughs> no. yeah. I so that, and then i also think about us too right like anything can happen like like you can pass before your parents yep. like yeah. it's just like you have to time is so valuable and you have to cherish every and single as, moment you as know i'm getting older that's mm -hmm. what I, I was the one who was never at family functions i was like i kind of valued like again my, my chosen family my best friends are my like I am more friends over family, and that sounds so bad to say out loud, but like I would do anything for my friends. Like even the other day, uh, I didn't want to go to the Father's Day brunch with my dad's side of the family, so I went out with my friends. I was like, I was like, cause I, I, for, for me, I like, I value this relationship so much, and even birthdays, like I'm that guy, like no matter what I have going on, I'm there, whatever, whatever it is, because that's just what it is. Um, but now I'm like, hold on, my sister's in Texas doing her little master's program. How can I see her? But I work. 
shoot, mom, okay, I'll call her every day. I'll FaceTime her twice a week. You know what I mean? It's just trying to figure out how can I yeah. now incorporate them because I'm yeah. sometimes I run, I use work as an excuse, which but Same. I do what we do work I do, a lot. I do as well. So like, like Sometimes there really is no time, and I hate that. Well, if you want it, you can make time. No, there is no fucking yes. time. I'm not. And sometimes wait, you're one day, you just want to listen. Yeah. I hear from like, my mom all the time, and she lives in Rancho, and I'm just like, <laughs> <laughs> you never come see me. I'm like, mom, you're far. Granted, sometimes I work in Rancho. I work in Rancho a lot of the time too, but it's just a lot. But it's never it's just like, a high buy. Yeah, I like, gotta sit. Mm-hmm. We're gonna talk for an hour and a half. I'm like, okay, now I gotta drive back to wherever I gotta go, and it's like that. that that's the thing. It's just so thing. It's yeah. always the time. And you don't want to feel rushed. Yes. Hey, so you don't want to be there and not be present. Yeah. There you want to so Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's what we mean when I think when we say no time. But we're yeah. trying to be more cognizant of that. And now that I have my own place, now that I'm getting into this like grown man era, because like, like I'm telling you, the mm-hmm. past two weeks you couldn't tell me shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like my place is sexy. I'm this yes. I got rent paid for it till October. Like I'm Ooh, like nice. chilling. Yes. Like, you know what? <laughs> What's that? Mm-hmm. What's that? What's yeah. that? Yeah. Oh, so yeah. I, mean, I can do yeah. that now. Like, you can go to the pool. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to fuck around with fly, fly somewhere. Yeah. Uh, uh, who am I flying out? Okay. Who's, cool? yeah. Who's flying me out? <laughs> yes. yes. No, that, that, so, 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 no. <laughs> so dating. <laughs> we need you to zoom in on that part. Yeah. Hey, you don't want to open Pandora's box, bro. Yeah. Because once you open that thing and you start saying, oh, yeah, hey, hit me in the DMs, you're, it's good. Yeah, we have one. Hey, hey, okay. <laughs> so are we single? Are we dating? I am. I am. Single. Um, I have, I'm, I am in this, I'm a bad person. <laughs> you're not. <laughs> I am, I've never ended things bad with my exes. So for some, some of them, they, they think the door is still open, but uh, it's very clear that it is not. Like, I'm not, we're no, we're not doing that. We're not hooking up anymore. We're not doing that. Thank you for that gift. I appreciate it. You didn't have to. I didn't ask for it. But yeah. yeah. It is what it is. Yeah. 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 Um, but I think now that I'm in this new era of literally not having to drive to Rancho. Like, independence. This, this, you know what I mean? Like, and true independence. Yeah. Like, it, I feel like a different person. Um, so, am I open to it? Absolutely. Um, I think sometimes, like, my, my red flag is that I, I push when for being vulnerable emotionally into that aspect is hard because I've seen so many heartbreaks with all yeah. my best friends who I'm like people are jumping off ledges and like I'm like you guys are crazy D- driving themselves to drink and I'm like I'm not going to that yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. we can like I've had a relationship where I'm like yeah we're chilling we're cool we've been together for two years I'm chilling but I've never like let that wall down mm-hmm. but I think with building anything new you have to, you can't start with walls up so Absolutely. I think me even saying that out loud is me being open to things because I'm like Ugh. so what, what but just what's no the price flag? went up now that you look yeah, at downtown yeah, yeah. the price went up absolutely yeah. <laughs> absolutely <laughs> so what, what's a what's a what's a green flag for someone that's going to go into your dm like what like what do you look for in, in a partner Ooh, um <laughs> somebody who doesn't need i work with kids for a living i don't want to have to date a kid mm. you know what i mean i don't like i we can't, we can't talk all day. Like, I don't, I want to miss you. You know what I mean? Like, I don't oh, need, yeah. like, I like you yeah. can talk to good morning, but the minute I'm in work, you can't be like, hey, what are you doing? What are you doing? But you know that between 2 and 10.30, I am with these damn kids. So, like, <laughs> it is what it is. Yeah. You know what I mean? So then let's talk after. Like, and if I miss you, I'm going to catch up in the morning. Like, I, I like the, I don't like schedule when it comes to that stuff. And I know mm-hmm. some people are like, oh, I like to. I like, need a good morning text. I need a good night text. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like yeah, I'm not, I'm not saying I'm not going to do it, but um like it's it's i like i get bored easily mm. so i like spontaneity i like random things i don't know i maybe i don't maybe i'm not ready for a relationship <laughs> um, <laughs> it sounds but, like you no, you have a good time and, and enjoy just, the new yeah, money it sounds so much you travel. want a daddy you don't want to be a daddy yeah no i well, the last person i did i guess i i guess i am daddy um <laughs> he literally said it the other Anymore. day and he was like oh shoot you're kind of daddy and i was like i mean I mean, yeah, but no, I mean, I, I, I just want somebody who can understand my life. Cause again, my, our jobs aren't conventional. Somebody on the That's same wavelength. The mm-hmm. Like you, you don't need to be in the arts. I mm-hmm. kind of don't want you to be a dancer, to be honest. I was going to ask um, that. I mean, I'm pretty sure like all of you guys are, there's, you said there's now there's more males in there. Is it, I felt like it'd be like a pool of people that you could just choose from, from the dance community that would understand. Dance. No, not, what about, not. what about someone that's like not a teammate Gets but messy. in the dance community like is it just too tightly knit that you're like i want to keep that separate that was amorous <laughs> that's exactly what happens um, <laughs> I, I don't know this doesn't sound so uh, um i we we okay as anybody in the arts we all have our different struggles you know what i mean but i don't 
if I'm in arts and I'm trying to pursue a career in this and this and this and that, you can't be trying to pursue as well. Mm. You know what I mean? Like I've dated people who were producers. I've dated, like, I don't want, I'm not saying I'm looking for somebody who's so rich and established. I don't need that. You know what I mean? I do pretty well for myself. Um, but you can't be trying to find while I'm trying to find. I don't want to struggle together. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know what I mean? Um, that makes sense. And whether that's, un and that's not, not necessarily an age thing, but I think it's just like I have friends who are doctors. I'm like, oh, or, or nurses, nurse managers. I'm like, oh, that's kind of hot. Like you're, you're settled, like you're good. You're not here trying to hustle. Somebody who's already established. Like let me be the one that, like, hey, I can't see you for the next two months because literally I got to travel to make this rent. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Like, I, we can't do it together. Yeah. Um, but I also think it'd be kind of cool to do it together. So I don't know. I'm all over the place. Um, <laughs> everybody has a shot. Um, <laughs> <laughs> hey, let's open with that. Hey, everybody else. Yeah. Like, doesn't mean you can shoot it. Oh, your DM's about to be fucking crazy, <laughs> bro. You have no idea. I'm like, yeah, but hey, you know what? Our, our next, our next, uh, because we do like a blind date episode. Yes. We do blind date episodes. That, uh, where Eddie, remember my friend Eddie? He wrote yeah. it on our thing. He's like, you guys need to do a gay one. A gay one, yeah. yeah. Eddie's like, so basically, we have like you contestant, and then we have like a a wall here, and then we pick like five guys, and you question them, and then you pick who you want to go on a date with. <laughs> So I, I feel like so down? Fun. That'd be kind of fun. I feel Let's like we, we found our next contestant for oh, yeah. day. Oh gosh. yeah, what is it? Yeah, signing up so, for. So so just don't get booed up this summer, please, because we we need you. We need you single. You hurry up. We need <laughs> <laughs> No, it's weird, y'all. You better hurry up. <laughs> Especially after this releases your DMs. Like, crazy. oh my gosh. Like even I mean, it's 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 also crazy being out. Again, I'm really comfortable with myself and like comfortable and everything. Like I have like cousins and uncles of like my kids who are like, hey. Your hands up. And I'm like, ooh. Really? I this was like I've met so many I've I've had dates with people from dance competitions. Like, like because it's mainly a kid course, thing, you know yeah. what I mean? And but they have a cute uncle and he's like, Well, I just wanted to come for this one comp. I live this year, but can we go out sometime? You're really cute. And I'm like, oh shit. Not me over here in a onesie ooh. with the <laughs> kid. And I'm so pulling. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I don't know. It's all it ha thing, things happen for a reason. I even ran into somebody at Ralph's the other day in Whole Foods. I was like, oh shoot, I didn't this being out in LA, just walking around. You know what I mean? Well, I mean I feel like LA would is the prime place it's for like, you to where be, you where, be. Yeah, yeah. people meet people in Whole Foods yeah. all the time. Yeah. <laughs> I was trying to get some kombucha. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you found a date. So so just just even kind of going in, I mean, like you like we talked about, you you've been on a you actually were the pioneer for for men, for being on the on the dance team, for for a major sporting team, amazing race. You've been on TV. You you still teach at two studios. So what would you say is like your next phase from all of this, like business wise? I know you want to get on TV and stuff like that, but in the dance community, like is opening a studio something every choreographer strives for? Or is that just like one thing that you have on a bucket list, or is that just not down your path? I wouldn't open a competition studio. Um, one, I think there's too many. Excuse me. Two, I think there's no loyalty anymore. Um, with now that everything's on social media, like it's so easy. Like, hey, I like what she's doing, and we're not getting that over here. So I want to go over there, and then people are just literally flip flopping. Um, and I have so many friends within the same city who we literally swap kids. Like, she doesn't like this teacher, so she's gonna go over there. Oh, wow. and it's, it's yeah, and it's it's. I mean, and now it's to a point where like they're not leaving because of me. They want to stay because of me, which is kind of cool because I really do have a really good track record when it comes to competition wins and everything. Um, but. I only teach one, two days a week at these studios who are open mm -hmm. four or five days a week. So like you love my Mondays and Tuesdays, excuse me, but you don't like the Wednesday, Thursday teacher or you're not getting enough from your Wednesday, Thursday teacher. So it's like, well, it's not worth it money wise to pay all this stuff when you're only here one day a week. And I'm not giving that anymore. Yeah. Um, Cause I really like the outside stuff that I do. Um, being able to get into, like I said, I want to get into hosting more and I want to get into more TV work and all that stuff. And, I just like being on camera and yeah. not in a vain way, but I like, I'm an entertainer and yeah, I've been born man. like this and this is just who I am. Um, so the more I can get into that, that aspect, I've been trying to get on Dance with the Stars for years. Um, hit me up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if I can get on Dance with the Stars, I'll probably retire. Really? Like, yeah, I, I I can probably How many happy. seasons are they on now? Like, God, there are a lot. Too many. Five? Yeah. But, so, yeah I, I see you in front of a camera oh, for sure. I can definitely see that. But yes. that's not like, like, like in the dance in the dance world, like what's like the holy grail? And that's why I asked like, because you know, there is a lot of studios in LA. Um, like you mentioned, there's a lot of studios. I, I don't know if they're like, oh, that dance instructor teaches there and that's like the holy grail. Being on Dancing with the Stars, is that something that like, I know they probably get paid well, but is that like, man, a lot of dance choreographers are like, I want to make it on Dancing with the Stars, or is that just a you bucket list? I think it might be just, uh, like, might just be a me bucket list, because a lot of people that go on that show aren't 
ever relevant. It's more one of those things that just keep them in the in the light. In True. The know. Mm-hmm. Um, but I I don't know. I think everybody's different, and I have friends that their biggest goal was to be on tour with somebody. You know what I mean? Like, and as much as I would want to, I still have that itch a little bit. But I know that coming back from it and again rent has to, like rent has to be paid rent now like it's different out. rent I, is like, due <laughs> but, mm-hmm. and i also know that what i do choreography wise like if i don't work with the team and they find somebody else that they like i'm probably not gonna ask back and that's now rent out of my pocket yeah. so now it's like okay well i don't like big brother is trying to they're trying to give me on big brother and i was like but that's june to september oh like, wow that's my september. main choreo yeah. like season and i'm like yeah. i can't lose all that because yes i can say whatever whatever for the year and then know that june september i'll be on the show hopefully when but then what happens the next season when those teams that i worked with all 500 hopefully 500 i come back and go, oh we already we, we, we replaced you yeah. Yeah. Replaced. Yeah. Like, goes on. everybody's replaceable and i always tell my kids Facts. that like no matter how much you are liked you are one absent away Just a number yes you're in, at the end of the day especially in America, it's capitalism. Yeah. Fact. <laughs> and, and, and what if they like somebody who's cheaper? Mm-hmm. You know yeah. what I mean? Like it's, that's real stuff. Yeah. Uh, so for me, I think that's the thing I'm battling right now is like, what's next? Because I've done everything already that I wanted to do. So I think that's why I keep pushing myself to other venues and other avenues. Cause I'm like, okay, well, I did the Rams thing. That was really cool. Okay. I did my TV, a couple of TV game shows. That was cool. I haven't won a lot lies. I won one, but I want, I want more. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And I think we're all like, as a just a natural entertainer, you always want more. And I think that's, or even just a hustler. I think everybody's here. Like, like we talked about it earlier, sometimes like, what's that number that's going to get me happy mm-hmm. enough to like to stop making enough money for the month? But that's never going to be enough. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Whether that's ten thousand, whether it's twenty. Okay, why can't I make fifty? You know what I mean? Yeah. We're okay. always greedy. We're greedy yeah. people, and that's just yeah. what it is. Yeah. We're hustlers, um, and we nobody wants to be complacent. And I think there's like this negative, like I don't know if it's a, a negative trait, but we're never satisfied in mm-hmm. a sense. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? mm-hmm. And maybe I'm talking about myself. <laughs> but yeah. there's always like, hey, am I doing enough? Am, am I am I good? Am I going to be replaced next year? And there's always that little like Billy in the back of your head, like right. talking shit. And you're like, oh my gosh, I'm listening. Okay, cool. I got to do more. I got to lose sleep for the next three months. Um, but I think going back to the question of like, what's like the holy grail? I think it really does depend on the person. Like I have friends that like, all they want to do is be a dance teacher at a studio. I'm like, that's not big enough for me. Mm. Like. I did it. I love it. I love my kids. And I'm, I think the coolest thing is seeing my kids be successful in it, whether they make these top tier college teams and their high school teams, or they are the ones dancing for the lab and the ones that are dancing in these halftime shows and like Beyonce dancers. Like that, that's dope to say, you know what? Mm-hmm. I did that. Like that's dope. Like we did that together. Yeah. Um, and, but I am, my end goal is not to be at a studio. Hell no. I don't want to own one. Um, if anything, I'll, I'll like, own a training space where you guys can come in and train with different teachers. But as far as competition, absolutely not. Um, no. Mm-mm. Yeah, it's, it sounds super competitive. It, yeah. I mean, but that's just like any industry. I mean, the more you talk, I can I can relate it to like the fitness industry. Absolutely. So it's like, it's not too far off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. So you, like, you, literally yeah. you, can, you can literally crumble mm-hmm. yeah. it to it. <laughs> <laughs> so, for, so for me, I would just say, I, I want to really end this with uh, you being able to talk to your audience, right? You have a you have a broad audience that follow you either from the Rams or whatever other entertaining you've done. But what's something that you really want to leave people with a side of you that they wouldn't get on social media? Ooh, um, I can't say you won't get on social media because I really do try to. You're pretty transparent on social media. I'll be on the toilet, <laughs> toilet sometimes. <laughs> like, y'all sit on the toilet. <laughs> um, but I think just in general, once you like you have to find your lane and your path. And once you're in that lane, stay in it. And I'm telling you, things just happen. Like, there's been so many opportunities where I'm sitting there like, how did I even get that DM? I'm just over here posting dance videos. And I'm just, I'm just being Quentin. And that's like literally it. And it feels good to really say that. Oh no, I'm just being myself, I'm chilling. And not like that whole like, I'm living authentically, but then you're- <laughs> <laughs> You know what I mean? You're you being know, your like, authentic trigger words. self. Yes, yes. I, don't even. <laughs> um, but I think like the good, bad, and ugly, and you're going to have bad days. Like, I think I, this past year I've been through like the most, and one of my friends brought it up, like the most kind of traumatic year I've had between the parents' divorce, between like the ups and downs of being on that show, between leaving Rams and all that stuff. And um, even like just this personal things like, okay, what's happening? Like This, this is kind of your trauma year. Yeah. And, but even like dealing with that, it's like, okay, everybody goes through this stuff. You know what I mean? And yeah, you can have a moment, just like I tell my kids. You can have a moment, but get back up. You don't have a choice. <laughs> like, rent's due. Um, yep. 
but even besides the rent, like I just think making sure you're taking care of yourself and whatever that means for you. Um, and just allow yourself to be open to anything. Cause I think a lot of us put ourselves in boxes. Um, and sometimes like I would never have guessed that me teaching dance got me into hosting a red carpet. Like I would like, I'm sitting here like, well, how did I even get here? Then I'm like, wait, well, actually I'm prepared for this. You know what I mean? And like giving yourself that, those, your own flowers, which I think we don't do enough. I think we're so humble sometimes. And yes, it's great. But also like, you have to realize that, no, you're that bitch. You did that, you did mm. this and that. And let's have a moment. I'm not saying I'm being cocky about it, but like we've had, we've all done some pretty cool shit. And yeah. you don't, we're always like, okay, what's next? What's next? What's, what's next? Instead of living in that moment of like, okay, no, that was really cool. Hold on. Yeah. Let's celebrate for a second. You know what I mean? And celebrate you. Um, Cause we don't do it enough. We really don't. Yeah. Um, I love that. Please. Celebration. Clap, clap, clap. Let's go. <laughs> so what I got from this is rent stew and celebrate yes. your motherfucking self. And yes. <laughs> All DMs, please uh, send them his way. He's oh, open. <laughs> He's open to coffee. After coffee, though. Coffee? Coffee. coffee. He's open dates. to coffee. coffee. And you got to live in the LA area. Don't don't be trying to... Unless you want to fly him out. Unless you want to fly him out. Vacation. Mm -hmm. But you're not Soho House member, so we can always Ooh. go to Soho. Oh. Um, well, shit, I want to go. Hi, okay. <laughs> it sounds so sexy, y'all. <laughs> right, I can get up for it. Okay, can, come on. <laughs> <laughs> the we home one time. The, uh, all right, guys. Catch us next episode at the Soho House. DM is all of us <laughs> in his DM. <laughs> so that so, day <laughs> tonight, nine thirty. Yeah. <laughs> all right, you guys. Until next time. Thank you guys for tuning in. Bye. See ya.